If you're a fan of the channel, you've seen my older videos, you know that I'm a big fan of space themed sneakers, and we're looking at one that's just about done perfectly. So today, guys, we'll be getting into the NASA and Reebok Classic Leather Hexalite. Let's get into it. What's going on everybody? It's Mike from the Sneaker History Podcast and we are back with another video. Guys, thank you so much for joining. If you hadn't done so already or if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, drop a comment. Those things get the video through the algorithm so of course more people can see it. And for those who've done so already, a big thank you to you. And for those who will do so in the future, big thank you to you as well. Now, we're talking about space again, guys. If, again, if you've seen the channel, you know I'm a huge fan of space themed sneakers from galaxies to aliens to planets, you name it. I love that kind of theme. It's just a lot of creativity behind it. And today, guys, we're looking at one that is just as creative, and it takes a different approach that I hadn't seen yet. So today, we're looking at the NASA and Reebok Classic Leather Hexalite. Now, first off, Reebok, I always gotta give you guys a big thank you. I appreciate you guys for sending this one my way. This is a super awesome collaboration, super awesome look, because it doesn't go the super, I think I said super three times now. It didn't go this really crazy way as you typically see like the bright color designs. This takes another direction and I really like the way they did it. This is part of a pack that's gonna be really like an archive pack for you know prototypes from NASA. It's gonna have of course the classic leather, classic leather hexalite. It's gonna have a BB4000 which was amazing. I think that one actually sold out looks just like an astronaut's boot and then you're gonna have the classic uh, not classic leather but the club c zip i'll put links down below of course i'll put a picture of everything else up here somewhere on the screen for you but these look great because you know what if you hadn't maybe noticed or maybe quite not looked at the shoe yet what does it look like to you? An astronaut suit, guys. It looks like an astronaut suit. I love the way they took that and really made it look like something that an astronaut would put on going onto the spaceship or maybe training. It looks great. I love the way they went with this. It's just a different direction than we typically see when it comes to space and galaxies and planets. This was a great direction to go. And it's such a, I don't wanna say muted design because it is something you, I don't have a little space shoe next to me, but it's a very big contrast to what we normally see, but it makes it so much more wearable but it also, it really digs into the story of the, the collaboration. So this is supposed to be basically a prototype that NASA worked on on Reebok. And I love, you're gonna see a lot of different hits here, you got tags here. Everything just talks about this prototype that was in an archive that basically Reebok is pulling out to release to the public. Now, we got the shoe here, but I gotta put the shoe down first so I can show you the box. Because again, when Reebok really goes into a story, they really go into a story. I love how they did this because it's kind of this box you find like in a, in a storage unit or like a facility somewhere. There's just a bunch of old things and on top, of course you have the Reebok branding here kind of in this mirrored font there or mirrored print I should say. But you're gonna have these cool tags. You're gonna have artifact transfer program here. You're gonna have item names, stock numbers, manufactured information. You're gonna have artifact printed on here as well. It is just, it, they go all out to let you know, hey, this is a piece of, of NASA history, a piece of Reebok and NASA history, I should say. I like that, I like that storytelling because it, again, it doesn't take the same approach as like, oh, let's throw you know, galaxy print all over it, which I think is cool, but I like how they really dug deep into do something a little bit different. Now, as we get into the shoe, again, giving that really astronaut, that gray look you're gonna have here, it is gonna be covered mostly a leather and this kind of uh, nylon material, but it's a little thicker than normal nylon, but let's, let's take a look at it. So that leather is going to come around the Rand, the mud guard here is going to be kind of this really gray color that almost has like these fading points because they give it that age look because you'll see that it is supposed to be something from a lot of years back and we'll talk about that year and that time frame a little bit later. You're going to see a nice thick cut of leather going around the toe box here, but underneath that you're going to have that really thick nylon I was telling you about. So you hear it is a nylon, but it's not like that flimsy nylon you get on some shoes. This is super thick, really backed well, so it's not gonna get kind of those nasty creases or where it kind of goes out of shape because it doesn't have that responsiveness to really be flexible. So I like how they backed it enough to make sure A, it is not gonna lose shape and then surrounded by the leather keeps it in place as well. So I like the way they did that. Now you're gonna have a little bit of a blue hit popping right out there of that mud guard as well, give it a little hint of color. And as we're moving up to the eyelids here, again, done in leather as well. Well, there's gonna be a flat, kind of this grayish, and this oldish gray lace here. Kind of a semi-oval, semi-flat lace going on. And it's going to be sitting on top of this, I don't know what you wanna call it. It's kind of, it's not nylon, but I guess it's more of just a really tight woven mesh tongue here, done up in that same kind of darkest gray to oldish gray color. But when we're talking about the sneaker and how it's tagged and how it's really branded, they went all out. Again, keeping that story alive, talking about prototypes, artifacts. So you're gonna see right here on the tongue, you're gonna have prototype CL Hex. 
You're gonna have approved uh, for space flight, Reebok 642720, looks like a serial number, and then 1958. Now what's cool, 1958 was actually the year that Reebok was founded. And if you guys didn't know this, that was three years before the first American space flight. So 1961, if they wanna keep this story going, this potentially made three years as they're getting prepared for the first space flight which is kind of cool if that was the route they were going if they wanted you to see it that way. Now up top, you're gonna have basically an unfinished tag. So it's gonna have this metal ring in it, of course, to pull up uh, to make sure it's not falling when you're putting a shoe on. But typically where you get a Reebok branding here, it has this kind of like Velcro patch where you could go ahead and put different patches there. So like, again, an astronaut suit had different patches in places. This allows you to put different patches, which that would have been a cool addition if they would have had that with the sneaker. Maybe look down at the box to see if I missed something. It didn't have those, but I think that would be a really cool opportunity if they did this again to have multiple patches to put on maybe the tongue. And you're gonna see that same Velcro where you would typically get Reebok across the lateral side of the shoe. I like the minimal branding, but I think that patchwork, those additional patches would have been a really, really cool touch to take it to the next level. And this shoe's already really cool so that just would have made it just even better, I think. Now, as we talk about tags, you're gonna have like a lot of space shoes out there. I love you have kind of the remove before flight tag. This is a little different because this is an artifact tag. So if you're going in looking through different art, like libraries of different uh, items and just storage, you're gonna have a tag here. This is gonna show the transfer. It says lunar sample number, has a barcode on there. Of course, has a Reebok branding. So this is really cool. Let me not have it upside down for you. But of course, we got B-roll up so you guys can check it out. But I, I really like how they have those additional pieces there. Really cool there. Again, staying with that theme, very consistent with the sneaker. And it was really nice is that going with that minimal branding they went with this shoe, you still have the Vector logo, but it's done up in this clear TPU that's very just, it blends in with the shoe well. Again, not taking away from the space thing because you're not gonna get a heavily branded space suit or astronaut suit. So to make sure it's really blended into the sneaker super, super well, done in a way to where it's not popping out too much. So very nice, it's gonna be covered with the overlay that's still gonna be that leather we're beginning across the shoe. As we get to the heel cup here, you're gonna go ahead and get another pop of red, more leather wrapping around the heel, and that's gonna be attached to the lateral and medial side, which is gonna be another part of that really thick nylon we're getting here, so both on again the lateral and medial side there. Now you see the inside is going to be a very thick textile. I wanna say it's just a like a cotton or you know maybe like a fleece interior here. Really nice and thick, really plush. But in the inside, you guys can see that I got a B-roll of this as well because these insoles were glued down very well, so I wasn't gonna tear those up. But another artifact tag inside of the left shoe here so you can get more of that same information we saw on the top of the box inside the shoe as well, which is, again, really cool. Sticking with that theme, being really consistent. But that's the left shoe. Now on the right shoe, it is going to have, I'm gonna pull a paper out of here, is gonna have a quote from Neil Armstrong who landed on the moon in 1969. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Whoop, gotta catch that. Right there, again, I got better B-roll for you guys to actually check that out. So really cool, again, sticking with that space theme, giving you storytelling even in the insoles, which I love when you go all out that way. Now when you get to the back of the sneaker, again, not over branding, we got our first and only NASA brand you're gonna see in a shoe, right here in the back. A raised rubber NASA branding, Really looks nice, again, very minimal, so it's not taking over the shoe. I know there's a point in time, I cannot remember what year, it feels like between like 2016 and 2020, all this over-branded NASA gear people would be wearing, it was just too much. This is the perfect amount. One brand here because again, you're not going to NASA, they're not wearing these super branded items. Give me one hit of what it is and move on. I like it, they did a great job here. Now as we get down to the midsole, it is gonna be, the big difference from this in the classic leather is gonna be of course, the visible and touchable Hexalite. So I know a lot of times when we look at some of the older retros out there, like the Question, for example, it's always like the not the real Hexalite. I don't know if this is the real Hexalite. Again, I cannot remember you know the originals back when I was a kid, but this is something that's not in a bubble, it's not enclosed by anything, and it does actually, you can see it does compress whenever you do put pressure on it, so it does provide cushioning. This shoe's actually really comfortable to walk in, so if anybody wonder, yes, it is a comfortable sneaker for just everyday wear. You definitely should try it out. But again, we're going with this age midsole here, again, giving you this view, or giving you this idea this sneaker has been around since 1958, with another serial number going across the 
rear uh, rear side of that midsole. And you're gonna get the same color here. No big change except no printing on the, the medial side. Getting to the outsole, I love this piece as well because you're gonna get, of course, that kind of brownish, almost, I don't wanna say gum because it is, eh, yeah, definitely not gum. It's just kind of this brownish, darker looking outsole, traditional classic leather uh, pattern, traction pattern here. You're going to have the Hexalite branding, of course, right here as well as a Reebok, but you guys can see the coloring of it. It looks like, I'm dropping the laces there, it looks like it has the dust from the moon. Looks like you actually took a walk on the moon with these and you have a little bit of residue that's still there. So I think it's just super cool. I love the way this shoe looks. I love the idea of this shoe, the way they put it all together. It is just a fantastic whole product. Again, it's just about perfect. The only thing I would say, change, add patches so you can go ahead and put them on the shoe as well. But other than that, I think this shoe is a, a 9.7 out of 10. This is amazing. I don't know what came with that arbitrary grading system there. I've never done it before, but ha I'm just really, really like this sneaker. And if you're looking to get a pair, they're, they're not a ton of sizes left on a Reebok website. I don't know if they're going to be available in different places as well. Definitely check your foot lockers where Reebok sold, just the foot stores. But this one is definitely one worth to pick up. I know it's not a big hype collaboration that was probably talked about, but this is just a quality, just we talked about a good shoe. This is a good shoe. And I would say go true to size. Fits perfect for me, I wear a size 10, but again, I don't have a wide foot. So definitely try it on if you can, if you're a wide footer, may have to go half size up. Just gotta know it gets a little slender right here in the toe box and get into the top of the foot. But again, try it on if you can, or if you've ever worn classic leathers before, go with the same sizing there. But let me know what you guys think. Do you like it, do you not like it? I'm a huge fan, but leave me a note down in the comments. Until next time guys, see ya.